I've spent hundreds of hours searching for the best free alternatives to Premiere Pro, all in the hopes of saving us editors some money on those crazy subscription prices. A few months ago, I tested eight of Premiere's biggest competitors, but something wild happened after uploading that video. Dozens of you left comments telling me about other free alternatives, some of which I'd never even heard of. So I'm gonna continue the fight against Premiere and I'm gonna test seven of your software suggestions. It's gonna be the same drill as last time, recreating a video that I've already made in Premiere that tests keyframes, zooms, transitions, subtitles, and sound effects. Now let's get going with the most recommended software of them all, Caden Live. First things first, I drag and drop a folder with all of my assets straight into the software. I love it when an editing software creates folders based on the original file's organization. So a big fat tick of approval there for Caden Live. To begin, I start with animating on the first character. So you got this guy coming up first. Let's pull him on top. As with most softwares, this means changing values within a transform effect. Okay, it's got a transform effect added and it's down in the bottom right. It's all grayed out. Weird. So I clicked off the clip, then clicked back onto it, and that fixed it, which bodes well, I guess. Now adding keyframes was interesting, and I don't mean the good kind of interesting. I spent a good few minutes trying to find the settings so that I could change the velocity on these keyframes but it was just not obvious. I ended up adding an accidental keyframe, uh, which then just broke the software completely. Oh, it crashed. <laughs> oh, no. Okay then. Get it? Live. So I opened it back up again, started from scratch, added all my different character poses, and then finally went back to keyframes. All right, so my very useful cameraman's come in and told me how to do the keyframes. It was in fact a button. There was a triangle. Uh-oh, it's doing the thing that it did before when it crashed. Look at that, what, what's going on there? Yeah, this seemed to be a constant throughout my time here on Caden. Huh? That makes no sense. A few minutes of animating, adding keyframes and messing with the cursed velocity graphs, and I wasn't very happy with it. That looks Gross. And I think this was largely down to the jankiness of this software and it not being able to play back to me at 60 FPS. Amidst my editing, I also discovered this gem of a song hidden within the audio of this video file. A part of what I think made the Premiere video look so smooth was the keyframed blur in the background. This was easy enough to do in Premiere, but in Caden, patterns of its jankiness were starting to emerge all over again. Overall, the effect looked fine. So I animated the text, attempting to get a similar motion to Premiere. But once again, animating without a smooth frame rate is becoming more and more difficult to work with. I'm in 60 FPS and it looks, it looks horrible. Finally, I wrap up with adding sound effects, which are easy enough to implement. Using the in and out function, I could select the exact whooshes I wanted. The real issue here is just the lack of volume controls. There must be a way to change the volume. After a panicked few seconds of searching, I finally found what would change the clip's volume. And that was by adding this volume effect here. I have to add the volume effect. And after a couple minutes of that, I was done. Let's render this thing, because I think it's gonna play back better if we render it. Caden Live, guys. Had a lot of comments about Caden Live. A lot of comments. But I can say that this software is not the best. <laughs> it's not the best. It's gonna give you a good understanding of a timeline if you're starting out, but I'm never gonna use it ever again. And that's the end of the line there. In general, like the moving the clips about is fine, but everything else is just real janky. And I just, I can't get my brain around working on 60 FPS projects and not being able to see it at 60 FPS. That really sucks. It's not good to work with. On to the next software. All right, now we're gonna do open shot. Don't know what this is, but would you look at that? The first thing I see is our friends over at Filmora. They obviously took on the feedback we gave them from the last video. But on the Filmora website, it says HitFilm Express. So instead of falling for false advertisements, again, I downloaded the real open shot straight from the source website, which even itself looked real dodgy. I don't know which one to do. That looks like an ad. It's an ad, right? Something I always do when I'm downloading files online is plug them straight into Virus Total. When you download something like an EXE file, just drag and drop it into Virus Total. If anything comes up, then don't run it. So with nothing dodgy coming back in this file, 
I booted it up. First thing, as always, I dragged my editing assets folder straight in. And while it didn't retain the folder's original structure, it still plugged all the assets in. So I'm happy. The first thing I noticed on OpenShot was the strange tracks below. This looked unlike most other editing softwares. Now I don't know what I did here, but I right clicked and hit a properties option. And that showed me where all the keyframe controls were hiding. So I get animating. Changing the keyframe velocity and shapes was very easy as all I had to do was right click this little icon and then I could pick from any of these many options. I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea what the difference between most of these are. Okay. But with the animation looking nice and smooth, I dropped the other PNGs onto the tracks and started animating between them. Except, OpenShot had a few other ideas. So fading is like a physical clip. I edited away for a good few minutes, changing the background, adding all of the PNG animations, and going through all of the transitions, of which the best looking one I could find was this. <laughs> then the subtitles, and good lord, the subtitle options in this software, what a trip that was. Yes, I know it looks like a Microsoft Paint template, but come on guys, it's got heart, am I right? I'm f***ing trying here, right? I'm trying. This is me trying my hardest. So, I rendered this steaming hunk of poop, and this is the final thing. Let's give this a watch, here we go. Um, OpenShot opened my eyes to the possibility that it won't, uh, it's, I'm never gonna use it ever again. It gets a not use out of 10 for me. What to say about it? It's kind of expected at this point for having free softwares, but there aren't any adjustment layers. So I couldn't do things like zooms. I couldn't do transform motion blur. At least the keyframes work though. Better to use than Caden Live. I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed using Caden Live just because the playback was smooth. It was actually playing back at 60 frames. Love to see that. Otherwise, wouldn't use it ever again. The next one is Power Shot Director. Is it? Pa no, it's just Power Director. The next one is Power Director. Never really heard of this until someone commented about it. This one's got a lot of AI stuff going on. I think that's an interesting sidestep to take and see what it can do. See how powerful the future is. Welcome to Power Director, professional grade video editing. Accept. I don't know what I just accepted, but I accepted. There were three options here. One free and two premium. Obviously today we're going with the free one. Will that be a terrible idea? Well, let's see. That's, that's wide. So I drag and drop the assets folder into the software and a couple of error boxes later, it's all in there with the file structure and all. Good job, Power Director. So I begin with the animating as usual. This brings up an advanced window, like with a lot of these softwares. I found it pretty easy to make keyframes and change the velocity of them. And this is what that initial slide up animation looks like. I'm just surprised that it's got keyframes on it. Then I discovered something I hadn't seen on a software today, motion blur on the transform effect. Now, this may not seem like a big deal, dude, but it kind of is for me. Motion blur on moving objects and PNGs makes such a difference to the animations. However, the drawback here with this one is this horrendous bug where PNGs with motion blur have black backgrounds where it should be transparent. Brother, uh... But all in all, ignoring that glaring bug, it's good. I'm able to see the like preview and move the keyframes. Surprisingly good. Oh, it's not good. Not good at all. The transitions in here are fine. Really nothing to write home about. However, the real sucker here is like with Caden Live, it is extremely laggy and has an inability to play back smoothly, which totally hinders the efficiency when editing. I mean, th this is horrifically laggy and horrible to use, but I, I do kind of like it a little bit, weirdly. So I finished the PNG animations in that little advanced window and plop some, let's say, interesting text on there. And then I'm onto the last thing sound effects, which were really easy actually, all with intuitive volume controls, which I love to see. All right, let's export this thing. That was a tricky one because I wanted to love it, but at the end of the day, it was really janky to use, especially towards the end of the editing. All I could do is just hope and pray that in the export it would come out okay. Wouldn't recommend that one. Also the watermark at the end, you, you just can't really use it for free if you're gonna upload onto YouTube. So it's kind of, it was, it was kind of pointless. A lot of promising stuff on it though, you know, like you could do a motion blur on the keyframes. That's about it. Next software's PowerPoint.
So to begin with, I start my project with a blank template. I drag and drop a video into the presentation, and to my surprise... Oh, you can put videos in. It actually gets the video in there. Q. I stretch it to fit, then I plop one of my little PNG characters on there. Then I attempt to slide in animation, which looked about how you'd expect it to on PowerPoint. Oh, so I have to... I have to press space every time. Hey, it did it. It did slide up. Then I'm on to the next PNG, trying to get the characters to line up between presentation slides. There was a crash at one point, which was slightly concerning. What happens if you don't save in PowerPoint and you have to refresh? But it turned out to be fine in the end, minus the layers getting mixed up. <laughs> oh, look at all these transitions, man. Come on, we can have fun with this. The transitions were the highlight here. Kind of crazy that these existed. That was pretty cool. I was more impressed with these than I was in any of the other softwares. So listen, there's no timeline in PowerPoint. It's obviously not a video editing software, or is it? That's the question, and the answer is no. But these transitions are sweet. They are really cool. They are cool transitions. Let's watch it. NEXT SOFTWARE! But before we do that, a little break outside. I always advise to you guys when editing, break it up with doing something like going for a walk. It'll help keep your attention span going. What the hell? Bro really just left like that. <laughs> <laughs> also, go buy my presets. They're great. Our Canva is another online editing software, or is it an editing software? I don't know. I can ask questions in the bottom right. How do I cut clip? Okay. Well, that's kind of cool. I've got like a little editing assistant. What do you think about Premiere Pro? You don't like Premiere Pro? Pro? Boring! After all that, I only learned how to split a clip. Split. And split a clip I did. Nice. All right, okay. Pretty intuitive so far, guys. What the hell? So intuitive. Where did my clip go? Something that would become immensely obvious to me in the coming 20 minutes was just how presentation-oriented Canva was. My expectations for this software were that it was going to be a video editing software only, as there were so many comments recommending this one. So I animated, using only presets as there are no keyframes here, and it looked fine. <laughs> I can't use it guys. You have to be on the pro membership to use that masterpiece. There are lots of paywalls in place here. Music and stock sound effects being part of that. Something that did surprise me and something that I haven't been able to do in any of the other softwares is a pretty decent character PNG transition. Check this out. And the transitions were very basic. And I mean, very basic. It's always really creepy just me standing in a field with that music playing. There is something quite like unnerving about it. The final touches were added with the text. And for some reason, I didn't change the text to say Canva, which retrospectively is pretty funny. There's, it's very limited what I can do here. The thing is, it's a web-based editing software. What do you expect, you know? And as far as web-based editing softwares go, which I seem to be becoming quickly a professional with, it's pretty fine. It's actually probably one of the better ones. Let's take a look at the final thing. Thank you to the many of you who commented Canva. You poor souls. Hope you can get a software soon. Just download DaVinci. What are you doing? Next software! Next software! Clipchamp is by far one of the most requested softwares I've been told to look at by you guys. I'm really excited. My hopes, my expectations are pretty high. Clipchamp is yet another online editor, like Canva and Adobe Express, which from an editing point of view is pretty convenient as it allows me to work without having to download and run anything. The question is, does this make it a worse software choice? Immediately, I have to say no. I actually found Clipchamp to be incredibly easy to use. The transitions were quick. The fade in and out function is useful for quick edits and overall, 
the UI is pretty clean. The only thing that goes against this software is its simplicity and, of course, a lack of keyframes. I do actually quite like it. It's just that, you know, like I'm never going to use it again. Like I see it and I'm like, this could be a heaven for someone on a social media marketing team who just needs to bash out an Instagram post or a YouTube channel that doesn't need any kind of special or intense editing. So for me personally, it ain't going to replace Premiere Pro. But for anyone out there whose computer can't handle much workload, or more specifically, anyone out there who does social media marketing for a company, this is going to be great. I'm going to be real with you guys. Did not mind ClipChamp. Out of all of the browser editors, it's the better of them. Next up, we've got a light video motion. Next software, a light motion. Let's go. Now, as you can see, I'm outside with this one, which can only mean one thing, that this is a phone editing app. I've edited using phone softwares like this before, all over the world, in fact. So I'm not going to treat a light motion any different. Now, straight off the bat, this app bangs. I genuinely love that this phone editing app lets you customize keyframes so easily. It's actually kind of insane. How can this free phone app do a better job in keyframes than most paid for editing softwares? I don't know, but it does. Some things I didn't like were the lack of transitions between clips and the massive amount of paywalls in place. They pop up constantly. You can just dismiss these with a very faint X in the corner. So yeah, it's still technically free. But honestly, on my first opening of the app, I genuinely thought I'd have to start a subscription with a free trial. So keep this in mind if you want to use this app for free. I managed to use custom keyframes and fade ins and outs to create these pretty nifty little character transitions. I also drew the title on there because why not, I guess. And finally, I added all my essential sound effects. And this is the final piece. A light video motion is great. As far as phone softwares go, it's pretty good. And I would say use it if, if that's all you got. If you just got your phone, you know? Very nice. At the end of the day, all these softwares are free. So it's kind of hard for me to properly criticize them because I'm paying a lot of money for both Premiere and things like Flame and Avid. Those subscriptions, they, they cost a lot. Therefore, I feel like the complaints are more valid. I'd still go with DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it's the best free software. Yes, you probably need a more powerful PC than if you're gonna use one of the web-based ones. You know, at the end of the day, it's just the best option there is, and it's free. I don't know why we're here right now talking about anything, I just go use DaVinci. And of course, we've got DaVinci Resolve presets over on storesr.com. Go check them out. Now get out of here. Now, play the Skyrim soundtrack. You over there! Hey you! Get out of here! You should probably get out of here too. It's that time, it's that kind of it's that kind of time with the video where you gotta get out of here. You should probably go. Yeah. I'll see you in the next one. Get out of here! We're green, not that. Yes, I'm the papa. Don't rock fada. What's the stylist? I'd rather make my toes merge by the boat, though. But in the club, popping up, I'm super biased. 